In just a few decades, a disease that was once associated with only heavy alcohol consumption has become alarmingly prevalent in both children and adults. We are talking about fatty liver disease, a medical condition characterized by fat accumulation in the liver. In the United States, it affects up to 46% of adults and 5 to 10% of children, regardless of weight. And guess what? The culprit behind this epidemic is not just alcohol, but also sugar. Sugar and alcohol are remarkably similar in how they affect the liver, with fructose, the sweet molecule in sugar, as the culprit. In this video, we'll explore how sugar can impact our bodies and contribute to the onset of metabolic disorders. You'll also learn about some blood tests to determine if you're in the danger zone. Let's get started. This research might change your thoughts about sugar and its impact on your health. A recent study conducted on children with obesity and metabolic syndrome found that reducing dietary sugar and replacing it with starch can have significant positive effects on metabolic parameters, even when calorie intake and weight remain constant. Simply swapping out sugar for starch can improve blood pressure, glucose tolerance, and cholesterol levels in children with metabolic syndrome. These findings challenge the traditional thinking that calories matter when it comes to maintaining a healthy weight and suggest that the type of calories we consume may play a more significant role in our overall health than we previously thought. It's important to note that dietary starch was used in this study for ease and must not be consumed in large quantities. You can always replace it with fresh fruits, veggies, nuts, and seeds for an added nutritional boost. Now, let's see what makes sugar so unhealthy. Sucrose. Sucrose, the typical type of table sugar, is made from two molecules, glucose and fructose. Glucose is an essential energy source for the body, fueling various bodily processes. However, excessive consumption of glucose can lead to many health conditions. Your body can make glucose from fats or proteins, even if you don't consume it. But that's not the case with fructose. You do not need fructose to survive. It's found naturally in fruits and honey, but is also added to many processed foods and sweetened beverages as high fructose corn syrup. Think of dietary fructose consumption as pouring gasoline on a fire. It can cause and exacerbate many health conditions. When we consume glucose, our bodies release insulin, which can be detrimental in large amounts, leading to the storage of energy in fat cells and increasing weight gain. On the other hand, excessive fructose accumulates in the liver and causes fatty liver disease, leading to insulin resistance, which is entirely different from insulin secretion. Insulin resistance can lead to chronic metabolic diseases like heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, and cancer. These chronic diseases are causing a massive burden on our healthcare system. Have you ever wondered, despite knowing the dangers of sugar, why we cannot let go of it? Fructose is what makes it so addictive. According to scientists, sugar activates the reward centers in the brain and can have a drug-like effect that can induce binging, cravings, tolerance, withdrawal, and opioid effects. However, it's been difficult for scientists to prove that fructose is the root cause of these issues. Conducting long-term studies on fructose consumption is complex and measuring compliance is even more challenging. To get around these issues, researchers decided to carry out a short-term nine-day study where they found fructose restriction intervals improved various health markers. These included blood pressure, glucose tolerance, insulin sensitivity, and lipid levels. They also believed restricting sugar for a longer time could provide added health benefits. Now, let's see how fructose can harm your health. Consuming fructose may increase uric acid levels in the body through a complex metabolic process involving the liver. When we consume fructose, the liver converts it into several metabolites, one of which is uric acid. Unlike glucose, which is metabolized in all body cells, fructose is metabolized almost exclusively in the liver. 
The process of fructose metabolism generates adenosine triphosphate and produces lactate, pyruvate, and other metabolites. These metabolites increase the production of uric acid, which is then released into the bloodstream. The body also creates uric acid as a waste product when it breaks down purines, which are found in many foods. High uric acid levels can contribute to many health problems, including gout, kidney stones, and cardiovascular disease. Fructose may also increase blood pressure by causing the body to absorb more sodium. Sodium is a mineral found in table salt and an essential electrolyte in the body. However, too much sodium can cause the body to retain fluid, leading to high blood pressure. Fructose may also decrease the amount of sodium excreted by the body through the urine. This means that more sodium can be absorbed by the body, contributing to high blood pressure. But the children's study found restricting dietary fructose led to a decrease in diastolic blood pressure, which is the pressure in the arteries when the heart is at rest. Researchers also believe excess dietary fructose intake is linked with another condition called mitochondrial overload in the liver. Mitochondria are the energy-producing structures within cells responsible for generating ATP, the body's primary energy currency. High fructose consumption can overload the mitochondria in the liver, causing malfunction and contributing to the development of metabolic syndrome, a group of disorders that increases the risk of heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. This, in turn, can lead to organ-specific mitochondrial overload, which may be responsible for further manifestations of metabolic syndromes, such as high blood pressure. Another intriguing discovery from this research is that restricting fructose intake improves lactic levels, which are often high in those with metabolic disorders. Think of lactate as a byproduct of your body's energy production process. Elevated lactate levels can indicate a problem with your body's ability to efficiently use energy, like a car burning too much fuel. But restricting fructose intake improved lactate levels, suggesting that the liver may be better able to control the energy production process. A clear indicator of mitochondrial dysfunction is visceral fat. Men with a waist circumference of 40 inches or greater and women with 35 inches or greater are prone to visceral or liver fat. The key is determining if you're consuming excessive amounts of sugar and developing insulin resistance, a significant risk factor in type 2 diabetes and other metabolic disorders. Doctors advise tests like fasting blood glucose, postprandial sugar, and HbA1c to determine your blood sugar levels. But fasting insulin levels can also help. This is an easy way to detect insulin resistance. When your body becomes resistant to the effects of insulin, the pancreas has to produce more insulin to keep your blood sugar levels in check. Over time, this can lead to high insulin levels in the blood, which is a sign of insulin resistance. A fasting insulin test involves measuring the amount of insulin in the blood after an overnight fast. Typically, a level below 25 micro units per milliliter is considered normal. But most health experts believe the value is too high and suggest keeping it below 10 micro units per milliliter. It's important to note that while fasting insulin levels can be a valuable marker for insulin resistance, they are not the only diagnostic tool and should be evaluated in conjunction with other tests and clinical evaluations by a healthcare professional. Next, the ALT liver test is a commonly done test to determine the liver's health. However, it's only sometimes ordered as a routine test. This blood test measures the level of alanine aminotransferase in the blood. Elevated levels of ALT may indicate liver damage or disease, including fatty liver disease. However, the ALT test alone cannot diagnose fatty liver disease definitively. Other tests, such as ultrasounds or imaging scans, may be needed to confirm the diagnosis. The healthy range for serum ALT is typically considered to be up to 30 units per liter for men and 19 units per liter for women. But it's generally recommended to have levels below 20 units per liter for optimum health. Lower levels of serum ALT can indicate better liver function and overall health. However, it's important to note that the normal range may vary depending on the laboratory and the specific assay used. 
In some cases, the normal range may be slightly different. Additionally, normal ALT levels do not necessarily indicate the absence of liver disease or damage. We assume that obese individuals are unhealthy, but did you know that it might only sometimes be accurate? You can be thin, but unhealthy. Yeah, you heard that right. Fat is not the correct measurement of overall health. You could have a normal BMI and still be diabetic. And just because we have medicines to manage diabetic symptoms, we rarely focus on its prevention. Some simple steps can prevent these diseases and improve our overall well-being. You can always try functional medicine. By eating a balanced diet filled with delicious and nutritious foods, staying hydrated, getting enough exercise, managing stress, and working with a healthcare professional if needed, we can reduce the risk of metabolic diseases and live our best lives. Just like too much sugar can harm your system, excessive salt consumption can also wreak havoc on our health. But don't worry, we're not here to scare you away from your favorite foods. Plenty of tasty and healthy alternatives exist to the salty snacks and meals we all love. Check out 17 high sodium foods you should avoid and what to eat instead, or 15 foods high in sodium and what you should eat instead. Go ahead, click one, or better yet, watch both and learn how to reduce salt intake without sacrificing taste. Have you ever tried giving up sugar? Let us know in the comments below.